Mia texts Lily while we were at the table. When Mia asked why I wasn't invited to Lily's party, she responded, You know how painful it is for her to be around me. I hope one day we can all be in a room together without it being weird, but we need to respect that. She doesn't want to hang out with us. Mia was effing furious and my husband was livid. He ended up calling her on speakerphone and asked her where she got the idea. I was threatened by their connection. Lily kept saying she didn't know what he was talking about. Then she claimed Mia must be confused or lying because she never said that. That's when Mia chimed in and Lily realized she was on speakerphone with Mia in the room. Lily immediately yelled at them for tricking her and went off about how she didn't deserve to be attacked. Then she hung up. She sent Mia close to 20 texts while she was still at our house about this betrayal. It gets worse. She went ahead and sent a text to Mia's husband, bringing up something from Mia's college days about a certain drug, something Mia feels pretty embarrassed about. That was a really hurtful and low blow. Then she sent a text to my husband, pleading with him not to believe anything Mia says because, according to her, Mia is just too consumed by jealousy. We all four just threw up our hands and finally left. I thought this would be the worst of it. Mia and my husband ended up getting a little drunk, and the two of them ranted for an hour comparing stories. I swear a switch was flipped during that conversation. A lot of stuff came out about how many problems she's caused throughout the years and how she's always been controlling. I just got my popcorn and marveled because her crazy went beyond the scope I anticipated. Mia announced she was done with Lily, but alluded that things might get ugly. I just assumed she meant Lily would be dramatic, which I now see was naive. Mia told everyone in their group the following day there wasn't an official vote to kick her off the island. But, let's just say nobody fought too hard to keep her. Apparently there were a lot of issues with her. Lily has since gone off the rails. I've never seen anyone crash and burn so violently. She called my husband 42 times in two hours. She showed up at one of their friend's houses unprompted and tried to kick the door down. Emma even went to the extent of threatening to involve the police over a $1.40 bracelet that one of the girls hadn't returned. It's unbelievable. At this stage, everyone in their circle of friends and I started a group chat where we shared hourly updates of the texts and social media posts. Things escalated quickly, and her messages became more and more unhinged and abusive. Most of it was just empty insults, but some of the messages were really cruel. They made me tear up. I had to stop following her on Instagram because I was getting secondhand into Barbara's moment from all of her weird, passive-aggressive posts about her former fake friends. She made a bunch of vague threats, which I didn't think much of at the time, as you probably saw coming. She sent me a string of incoherent texts. I was kind of entertained by the fact that the worst thing she could say about me was that I was career-obsessed. I also have a disorder that prevents me from processing certain social cues, and she said something highly offensive about that that I won't repeat. I did screenshot it and send it to the group before I blocked her. I felt bad for some of the crap she sent to my husband. He had a hard time blocking her because despite everything, he was really worried about her hurting herself and is a person who deeply cares. At one point, he just handed his phone and told me to tell him if he needed to call the cops for a wellness check. The texts were hard to read because they really played on his insecurities. She went off about how she was friends with him when he was still a loser virgin and that it was only a matter of time before I left him. I'm not leaving him. He got cheated in college, and she texted that he deserved it, and that I was probably cheating on him. I used to be friends with her, but not anymore. When she stooped to mentioning a friend of my husband's who had passed away just to provoke a reaction from him, we both decided to block her on every platform. She's way more unhinged than I ever imagined. I even briefly considered getting a restraining order at one point. Maybe this is a lot of drama to share, but it gets even worse. She attempted to cause trouble between two other couples in our group by revealing instances of infidelity. Someone called this in the comments, basically saying she has something on these dudes for them to keep her around. I just always assumed they were super conflict avoidant like my husband and feared a meltdown. The first couple wasn't a big deal. I had never known this about them, but apparently they're open, so his wife already knew. At first it was satisfying to watch her flip out when this revelation didn't land. They posted screenshots in the group chat. This guy's wife basically laughed at her and told her she was delusional. The other couple was so much more depressing. Carrie and he didn't actually have sex, but he admits that they drunkenly fooled around twice. A few months after he started dating the woman who is now his wife. No kids. I hope they overcome it. Cheating is never acceptable, but my husband has made significant changes and matured a lot since then. This particular instance of infidelity hit hard because I genuinely like those two together. And I'm not sure if their relationship will survive this. It was a massive shock to everyone involved. To add to the pain, Carrie shared about their situation all over her social media, exposing his infidelity to everyone. 
Since then, we haven't really heard much from them. This was by far the hardest part of the saga. Finally, she threatened to release photos of everyone partying when they were in high school. I'm being serious. There was nothing life-ruining but certainly not things you want on the internet. The factor that saved them is that they were all underage and some photos were very sexual with partial nudity. I think it's effing weird. She kept these. I'm a lawyer and helped them craft a message explaining the consequences of distributing images of minors that are sexual in nature. I'm hoping this one goes away, but if she does post them, it won't be the end of the world. Most people won't really be phased that a group of 30-year-olds did drugs and hooked up in their teens. Just sucks. They have to deal with it. I knew she was off, but she reached another level of crazy. This literally all happened over the course of a few days. She claimed to care about these people like family last weekend, and now she's blackmailing them. I feel weird labeling this as a happy ending because I think this woman needs help more than anything. Her actions caused significant harm. It's tough for me to feel any sympathy, though. She spent years manipulating people and was incredibly strategic in her efforts to isolate me. If I'm being completely honest, she still frightens me. It's only been a short while and she's already caused so much damage. I'm worried about what she might do in the future, and it's concerning that all of this seemed to be brewing underneath, unnoticed by most people. It's just a mess. There is good news. I've always had my own group of friends, so I wasn't exactly pining to be included. But I feel like I'm meeting my husband's friends for the first time, and it's been nice. I'm still understand doubly hesitant because I spent years thinking they disliked me, and this whole situation has me in such a bizarre emotional whiplash. But I appreciate their efforts, and this ordeal has helped me understand them to an extent. The girls in their group put me on a text chain they've had going for years. Carrie got kicked out, and I love their banter. We're going to dinner with another couple this week, and I recently received a late invite to one of the girls' wedding showers. Everyone has sincerely just seemed a lot happier since all this went down, despite the pain that came with it. And for those wondering, my husband and I are really good. We're going to bring it up with our therapist. But we've made a commitment to never let toxic people come between us again. There is a moral buried in here somewhere, but I'm not sure what it is. I think it's something about how transparency and boundaries are important in all relationships, including friendships. Well, it might sound harsh, but as opposed to you, I'm going to call this a happy update for you and everyone else except for Carrie. I do agree with you that she does need help. I mean, you mentioned that this whole group went through some trauma together when they were kids, and maybe this is what she got from it, but that still doesn't excuse all of the horrible things she's done to you and everybody else. Apparently, over the years, the controlling, the manipulation, the gaslighting, the tantrums, all of that stuff. Anyways, here's wishing all the very best in the future for you and your husband and the group friend to heal and to move forward, and hopefully, you get to know them very well and become really good friends. Take care, Ruby, and thank you so much for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it.